All right, welcome back everyone to FNTV's coverage here at MWC Barcelona. We made it through day one and we're very excited to be back with Lotus Flare to hear more about 5G APIs, eSIM and more. Thank you gentlemen for joining me today and to talk to us about these buzzwords. Really, they're all over and I'm sure you guys are excited to see that as well. Terry, let's start with you. Let's pick up on some of those uh, themes that we discussed uh, on our, our previous interview around what role do network assets like 5G APIs and eSIM play in monetizing networks and creating new revenue streams? I, I believe uh, the uh, telecom operators are sitting on a gold mine uh, of APIs, especially with all the investment they've made in 5G. Uh, these are APIs like device status, fraud, bring your own number. If I put my consumer or developer hats on, these are incredibly valuable APIs. I would pay for um, And the challenge for the operators today is to how do we actually enable these APIs? How do we expose them? How do we monetize these? And, and that's something I think that all, a lot of, there's a lot of work going on by the different standard bodies, and I think it's coming together. I believe the inflection point is coming. On eSIM, um, in the past couple of years, I think the consumers have discovered eSIM travel. And, and what, what is happening now is people who used to not use data when they travel are now using data. So that's a new revenue stream for the operators. The challenge, again, is a lot of the operators, their eSIM wholesale platform are not sufficient to serve these new kind of breed of eSIM traveler apps. Um, and that's something Lotus Flare is addressing. And in fact, we're working with Phil on, that, on a project. Brilliant. So let's pick up on, on that point around eSIM. And, and uh, Eric, I'd love to hear from your perspective how eSIMs help to transform connectivity and what role they're playing. Yeah, I mean, eSIMs have really transformed consumer connectivity because it makes it much more friction-free, easy, convenient, fully digital for a customer to select a mobile operator to connect to install an eSIM. Um, the iPhone now supports storing up to eight different eSIM profiles. You can have any two active at one time. And with just a few clicks of a button on the app and the settings, you can get connected immediately. So from a customer standpoint, it's providing tremendous benefits. Um, the devices can remove the need for the physical SIM slot, which reduces the load on the device, et cetera. And then for operators, it's a great opportunity for them to quickly acquire customers through a fully digital means using eSIM. And Phil, would you, uh, would you care to share your side from, from Liberty's perspective on that? Sure, topic? yeah, thank you. As, as uh, the team said here, um, the device is ready, the network is ready. It really is about getting the back office ready and the marketplace is larger than it was, right? We were very happy selling SIMs at the airport and in grocery stores and convenience stores and now uh, it's a global story, right? Uh, with the expansion of e-commerce, people are very comfortable to buy this technology from reputable firms before they even begin their travel. Great. And let's discuss how that, that model that Phil's uh, hinting at and, and how that's evolving. Terry, if we could go to you now and, and tell us a little bit about how those eSIM market models look and how they're evolving. Um, if you look at eSIM, the, the value chain, I believe it's three layers. You've got the MNOs who are providing the connectivity and the eSIM actual profiles and SIM cards. And then you've got a layer above that, which are the resellers uh, who are essentially buying in bulk from the MNOs and then they're selling it. And then the layer above that are the apps and people who are essentially selling these to consumers or, or, or enterprise. Um, the bottom layer, a lot of the work has been done. And the middle layer, there's a bunch of players and then at the top is very crowded. But I think there's still a lot of opportunities in each of those layers uh, to monetize. And Eric, do, do you have to um, do you agree with that or do you have a, a different story to tell? Uh, I definitely agree with that. I mean, our theme for MWC this year is network assets monetized. And many operators are sitting on a rich set of assets that they haven't fully monetized and haven't figured out how to recover some of their investments on 4G and broadband. eSIM provides one of those opportunities. Um, using a, a platform like Lotus Flare's eSIM Express, wholesale and roaming teams can actually tap into their resources and very quickly and easily onboard new eSIM travel apps, IoT providers, and sell connectivity and eSIMs through a self-service portal. So it allows it a very friction-free, fast, easy experience and a way for them to monetize their network more efficiently. Great, and, and Phil, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit about 
what challenges um, you know wholesale CSPs face when it comes to monetizing eSIM, uh, especially you know given your position in the market and, and your experience? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. And and uh, you know to to build on the thoughts here, I think what we're finding is the existing systems were customized for a set of requirements, and those wholesale systems are hard to change. They take they take a lot of time and competing priorities. Uh, what we've found is by partnering with Lotus Flare, we actually can take a service model approach um, using the co-innovation approach that, that Terry and team champion with us. Uh, they bring a great understanding to the needs of the marketplace. It's rapidly shifting. So even our ability to keep up with the understanding is limited at times. So not only is the technology more flexible with Lotus Flare, but as a service, we're getting uh, a roadmap and features brought to us uh, because they see the marketplace more broadly than even we do. So perhaps, Eric, a, a good um, uh, next point here is to hear your side of that partnership and how you may perhaps more broadly Lotus Flare works with partners to, to help deliver eSIM and, and uh, more broadly network monetization. Sure. Um, I think partnering with Phil and the team at Liberty has been a great experience um, using that co-innovation approach. We've uh, built a solution together which really helps Liberty you know, monetize their network assets in the form of their data networks across their whole footprint um, and then expose those assets, sell those assets in the form of data connectivity to this growing universe of eSIM travel apps and IoT players that would like to buy from operators but have really been prevented because of the legacy systems were not efficient and uh, took months and months to onboard very difficult to configure and price new plans for the operators. Um, so using a self-service approach, we've made it much more friction-free. No IT involvement is needed to onboard a new eSIM reseller. And now they can address um, a global audience, essentially, and monetize their network in a new way. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, congratulations on this partnership. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to share with Fierce Network uh, your, your learnings and the success you've found. Thank you.